You can easily make layouts with the most important functions and controls for a variety of situations. It's really easy to make them. And you can have multiple ones for different purposes available at the touch of an icon. This is MetaGrid Pro, and it might be one of the best ways to control Cubase and other DAWs. That is, unless you don't like touching glass for this, which I wouldn't fault you for. The thing I like the most about it is that I have it running on a four-year-old iPad 9th generation, which you probably can get for $150 on eBay these days. The thing I like the least about it is, unfortunately, my own personal experience with the app stability. I'll talk about that later in the video. Installation is relatively easy. Uh, it's not one button and you're done, but it's simple enough. Uh, for Cubase, you have to install a few scripts. You also have to install the app on your Mac that allows it to communicate with it, Meta Server. Um, you might have everything set up in half an hour. Once you have it installed, MetaGrid comes with a few preset grids for Cubase and other DOS that are really useful, including a selected channel grid that updates based on, obviously, what track you have selected on the app. In MetaGrid, there is a hierarchy to the software that is a little convoluted, but once you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy to use. The hierarchy from zoom out to zoom in goes content manager, profiles, which contain workspaces, which contain scenes, which contain grids. I know, it sounds complicated. I'll, I'll take you through it. Profiles are setups for each different app you want to control with MetaGrid, so it can switch automatically to the right grid for it. Workspaces are collections of grids that you want to use together for a particular app. Grids are obviously where all the controls for a specific function are grouped together. And grids can be part of scenes that have multiple grids at the touch of a button, so you don't just have the one grid accessible, but many. Let me show you all this with my own configuration and how I use it to control Cubase. My main grid actually has six scenes. Some of them are grids I've created, and some of them are presets that came with the app. Two scenes with controls for the currently selected channel in Cubase, two versions of it, two scenes for MIDI control, faders and various functions, a scene that contains gesture pads, I'll talk more about these later, and a scene with big buttons when I'm creating and I want to be fast. The best ones, in my opinion, are the selected channel presets, which I customized for one of mine. They quickly allow you to open, close, and bypass the first eight plugins, and each plugin has its own set of eight parameters that you gain access to with these faders. You can modify panning for the selected channel, plus mute and solo, and of course the fader for the selected channel, which I have to admit, sometimes uh, it wiggles a little when you let go of the control, but generally it's, it's fine. And these have one of my favorite features, gesture pads. These surfaces can be configured to respond to certain gestures and taps with one, two, three, four, or five fingers. This bottom gesture pad can have its function switched by the buttons above it and do things like, for example, fast-forwarding or rewinding the cursor. You can nudge clips back and forth. You can fade in. You can also affect directly the clip gain of the entire clip. But it also functions as a transport control. Tap with one finger and it plays, and tap it again and it stops. Tap it with two fingers and it starts recording. Tap it again and you stop recording. And double tap it with two fingers and it undoes the recording and goes back to the beginning of the project. And I modified it to add four columns of buttons with various functions, including visibility shortcuts for when you have a project with uh, hundreds of tracks. And the best part about this grid is that it's actually six grids in one, or it has, in MetaGrid terminology, six scenes. You can switch between them with these buttons. 
this particular grid I use all the time when giving orchestral instruments expression, vibrato, volume, and changing the portamento speed on the fly. Something I mentioned in my comparison of Arturia's Key Lab and Native Instruments Control. Since Control doesn't have any faders, then this one is really useful to me. It's actually pretty smooth when you get used to sliding lightly on the glass. The other MIDI grid lets you edit controllers. You can compress or expand their values, increase them or decrease them by five points. You can create velocity and controller ramps on and ramp offs, quickly create legatos or transpose groups of notes. The Mix Console preset has various visibility and navigation functions. You can open and close various sections of the mixer, navigate the first nine markers, and bypass inserts and sends. This grid is all gesture pads divided by groups of functions and one that is similar to the one at the bottom of the selected channel grid. Uh, one of the coolest things about this one is that you can zoom in or out vertically just by sliding a finger. And lastly, I have one with big buttons for when I'm creating really fast and don't want to miss a tiny button. So how do you create grids? It's actually pretty easy. Every grid starts with open space that you can divide into areas like this. And then on that particular area, you can create any one of a number of things, including buttons, gesture pads, text, faders, etc. Let me create a button here. And then you have access to all the possibilities of that button. Not just for Cubase, by the way. All the categories of things that you can assign to it are here. Let's say add track. And then you can change the way the button looks like. You can put an icon over it. You can put text on it. You can affect the background of the control. I love those gradient ones. The combination of all those features makes for a system that when you configure it to your taste, lets you fly through your sessions, but only if you have a clear idea in your head of what functions you want for which situations. In my case, I would start analyzing my own sessions and what I would end up doing over and over again. That's great to be automated or made easier to control. For example, when editing lots of small clips in a session, be it dialogue or multiple vocal tracks with clips, I often found myself fading in and out a little with certain clips. Now I have standard fades 0.3 seconds long as buttons. I just select the clips and press either or both. And lastly, you can create these grids from an app in your computer as well. Now, let me finish with a pros and cons list with all due respect to the greatest tech reviewer of all time, Loopop. I'm going to call mine positives and negatives. How's that? Um, on the positive side, even with the cost of the lifetime license, plus the cost of a used iPad, it's pretty competitive uh, against controllers. It might end up costing somewhere around $250 total. It's endlessly customizable, which isn't possible with controllers with a defined set of physical controls. It not only controls DOS, but many other pieces of software. The preset grids include ones for FMOD Studio and WYS for those game music composers out there, Logic, Digital Performer, Luna, and Studio One. Isotope RX gets a dedicated one. Even development tools like Kaleidoscope and Xcode, and design tools like Figma, and for video, Final Cut. I'm going to be attempting next to make my own grid for DaVinci Resolve, which is where I edit these videos. On the negative side, it's regrettable because I wanted this review to be all positive. 
I love the app, I love its possibilities, but I do have to talk about my personal experience. Warning, this is just my experience. I don't know how representative it is of the users, and there's a community that are very happy using MetaGrid Pro. But the app has been regularly crashing for me. A few version upgrades ago, it started doing so. And I've gone back and forth with their support, which have been wonderful, if a little slow because it's a small company, but we couldn't get to the bottom of it. They are as puzzled as me. The crash logs suggest that it's a memory problem, which is even weirder because this app, according to them, is not supposed to occupy more than 200 megabytes of footprint, tiny. I've since switched from Wi-Fi communication with the computer to USB, and the crashes seem to have become less frequent. Some people have complained of crashes in the forums, other people just swear by it and its stability. Would this happen on a newer iPad? I don't know. Uh, would it be user error? Yeah, of course it's possible, but according to them, I have uh, things set up the way they're supposed to. I would love to update this in the future and say that everything has been solved, which most likely it will. The next negative is that it's not cheap. It's $99 for its lifetime license at the time of the recording of this video, or a $4.99 a month subscription. But the developer team is worth it. During the past year, at least, every month they were rolling out new features and versions. I purchased the app very early on, so I've been grandfathered in, but I believe I'm going to have to pay uh, as soon as the next version comes. And my last gripe, but it's not so much a gripe as it is a preference. With glass interfaces, you can't really develop muscle memory. Uh, and there are people that hate trying to do these things on glass. Uh, I have a friend that doesn't want to do anything <laughs> with these things. Um, for those people, it might be better to get a physical controller where you can even learn the buttons and not have to look at them while you operate them. Overall, I think MetaGrid Pro is a great deal. Not only do you get to uh, speed up your workflow, you also get this functionality for many other apps that you may be using right now. I hope all of this was useful. Some of you were asking me about the app that you saw me operating on those videos. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the next one.